So you got to have safety glasses, right? We don't wear short pants over two shoes in this class. Should be no synthetic clothing, right? Uh, leather gloves must be worn. We're making energy, making uh, making measurements. Or uh, now, when you when you have power off, the disconnect. So these are the disconnects. They're basically exactly the same as the other one. Uh, here, though, I have uh, two keys I have to turn. Uh, one of them allows us to open it up and then open up the disconnect, and the other one allows me to turn off, turn it off and on. It, that's just like that. So it's two keys. Luckily, they're the same keys on all of them, so all I got to carry is one set around. And we're not going to be opening up the inside because it's just like that one. It's got a relay, got got three fuses, but instead of being on the bottom, the, the three fuses on the side, and then it comes out with uh, with the connections that we have available. Uh, they do bring ground through uh, on those, just like on the other one, uh, but we're not going to really use that because uh, we're going to go through a transformer and. Uh, we're not in a situation where we need to have equipment grounded. Everybody understand that? So we're not going to utilize that. Uh, do not make any connections or circuit modifications while the circuit is energized. Most of this is common sense. Uh, the three phase disconnect must be locked and tagged during the circuit construction. Basically, the way you lock it is automatically locked, right? You understand? And what you have to do to lock to is just hit the e stop button. Right, the big yellow button, and then that'll lock it out. And I keep the key. I'm, I'm in control of the key, uh, so I have to unlock it for you before you um, before they stop. Just like motor control. Uh, what we'll do though is I'll have to find them. I don't know if Floyd uses them or not. Is that uh, when you're working on it, then you're supposed to. You need to put watch. You need to put the tag up there. Everybody okay? And that would tell everybody, tell me not to come in and energize the circuit. If I come over there and you say I need this thing turned on and you got your tag up there, <laughs> I'm gonna say I can't do it, right? A uh, short circuit test must be made on each circuit before applying power. Uh, basically, all you do is just take your own meter out. Uh, you, you're gonna have to pull out either the L1 side or the L2 side, right? Because if you don't, you're gonna read back to the transformer and then make a ohm meter measurement uh, on both sides. Press all your buttons, uh, all your all your manual buttons down and see if it goes to zero. If it, uh, the relays that we're using here basically, they have about about 2,000 ohms worth of resistance, and that's why they got 2,000 ohms worth of resistance. So, you know, uh, that's why we can put these uh, solid state limit switches in there. By the way, when you hear the term solid state limit switch, the inductive and the capacitive sensor uses the same symbol in, in electrical controls, and that's one thing we'll do uh, today. But we'll also back, go back and let y'all look at the symbols that we use in, mo in motor control, I mean in PLCs. The symbols are a little different, but they define, they define what type sensor is a little better than what we use in motor controls. So all we do for any solid state sensor is we put, uh, what do we do? We put a tight, we put a triangle in there. If it, re if it, if it, if it requires power, if it requires power, if it's a powered sensor, uh, then the way we do in motor controls is we come over here and we'll put the triangle and then this would be this would be l1 would be on this side and l2 would be on that side and then if it's a powered sensor we'll have another wire that goes over to l2 so you got you already got l1 right you understand if it's a if it's a sensor that doesn't require or require power all we'll need is what there's two wires, just the L1 side and the L2 side. Everybody understand that? So, uh, power, okay. non power. Yeah, this would be powered. But the symbol is the same. So if y'all look, they'll just draw, they'll just draw uh, a, a symbol in here. A lot of times they'll draw the limit switch symbol. Because that's what we call them. We call them solid state limit switches. So they'll draw the limit switch symbol in there. That's all we get in motor controls. I don't know if it's an inductive sensor. I don't know if it's a photoelectric sensor. Uh, we use this standard symbol in, in, in electrical. When we get into PLC, uh, they use the uh, uh, PLCs. It's, uh, they usually use what we call the ISO symbols for these different things. And what they are, they're in a, uh, they're in a square. And we'll look at those uh, today so you can see see the difference. So PLCs uh, are going to try to identify what type of sensor it is.
Uh, power bus may remove from the circuit while waiting an instructor sign off or help. Please press the e-stop button to remove power. Uh, and then if you've got the e-stop button in, you need to have your wad up there, your tag, right? Everybody okay? Uh, no more than two conductors attached to any terminal. No eating or dip bottles in the classroom are allowed. No beverages allowed on or near the trainers. No chairs allowed at the trainer workstation. Everybody understand that? Yeah, the problem is, is that uh, the way we banana plugs, that, uh, the, mat, the way the banana jumpers we have work is you can keep stacking those things as many as you want to. Uh, the problem is, is that especially if you get them on the bottom, we've always had a problem with that. If you get more than two, then they have a high likelihood of pulling out, just dropping out, just by gravity. And what you find out is it's like, it's like in my house. If I go in my house and I go to my circuit breaker, so normally your power's on, only got one, two wires. And then all your jumping is done where? Out in the system. And we never, we never put more, and you'll figure out, you can figure out how to do it every time when you ever get more than two wires, two conductors out there, uh, under any ter terminal. Right? Huh? Yeah, you just jump it from somewhere else, you know, and that's what's nice about it. So normally we let y'all put two on the power supply, but a maximum of two. But out in the industry, odds are when you get to your big transformer center, they're going to be two or three wires, depending on whether it's two phase or three phase. Maybe four wires if it's a grounding system or a wire system. Uh, not following procedures will deduct from the students. Lab grade experiments will be formed in teams of no more than two students. And I think how many people we got in the class? We got quite a few people right here. I know Eric's not here. Uh, Kim's not here. Huh? Justin's not here. So we got we got seven. We might break this row. Instead of using another trainer, we might let one team work with three. I thought we had eight in this class though. I fall. I'll bring the row up. Before starting the lab, the first thing you're gonna do is uh, obtain a grade lab uh, form, right? If you don't have that lab grade <coughs> form, guys, I'm count off form. You're holding up the works, right? Especially in motor control where we have bigger classes. You know, I come back here to sign off the circuit and I say, where's your lab form? You say, I don't have it. And you have to come up here and get it and come back. Well, you've wasted two, three minutes, right? You understand? Uh, fill in the required information at the top of the lab form before starting the lab. Mark, make, mark, mark. Make sure, so there's an uh, error there. Uh, make sure to write your name and your part. Let me go ahead and correct that while I've got this. Uh, make sure, make sure to write your name and your partner's name, uh, first and last name. By the way, uh, these lab forms are official grade forms. These are the guys that I can come back in five years and I know who it is. And we have people all the time, they'll put their first name out there. And then they turn that on their lab, their lab grade form. Now, I know who it is now, but five years, you know, when I see John, I mean, John's, you think I know. And we're responsible for your grade for five years. We have to keep records on how we graded you for five years. Uh, so you literally have the ability to, to, uh, have well, well, we, we put them in printer boxes and that's, and we keep them for five years and then we, we try to remember to shred them, but usually we get, we shred them. We usually keep ours longer than that because it's a little, Used to, we had shredded boxes around. And all you'd have to do is just go and dump them in the box. And shred it would bring their big truck out here. And they would do what? Uh, yeah, they'd come shred them for you, which is real neat. Uh, they did away with that, and now we got shredders. That means I got to sit down and do what? Uh, I call a shredder just to pay for it. You pay for it yourself? Yeah. The one we got over in the mill south's real neat. It'll do a real good job. I mean, in the, in the hall building, uh, but people use it and they don't empty it. So you go out there and it's full. So I've got a little one. I got a little one in my office. Yeah, you don't do a lot of stuff with that. Though. No, I don't. It, you can't do no more than like five sheets at a time. Uh, check the instructor's lab manual for corrections. I don't think we have any corrections in here. I can't remember. I need to find one. I got my, I got my, hopefully it's in here. Cause we don't want to keep that class in here. 
Uh, there are some new corrections and modifications. If, if not, I'll try to remember to do them. Do them, do them. Uh, write your first name and last name on the title page of the experiment. We have people that'll do that. They'll turn in the title, but they'll turn in the experiment without their name on the experiment, but they put it on the lab form. So what I got to do the whole semester long is keep the lab form on that thing, right? So normally what I do is uh, when I grade them, I tear the lab grade form off, and then I can give those back to them. So uh, not having your lab grade form at the workstation building would require information that uh, instructor sign off or research and key points from the lab grade. So basically all your labs are worth 100 points, and I deduct points. So I get down to zero. So we don't, we don't, it's real hard for me to set up a lab. So some labs you work, you do more on, some labs you do less on. So sometimes it's easier to make the 100 points, sometimes it requires more work, but it all works out on the end, right? And we got the deduction filling on that. When you need a lab instructor check or help, one team member must write his or her name on the file to be located in. On the podium at the front of the class, so that you can be on there, just like on Moses, stuff, right? In your program column, write your name, uh, place a check box indicating that you need help or a sign off check, and write the number of assignments. So, y'all okay there, right? Does that make sense? Uh, write the manufacturer's terminal numbers, line numbers, and numerical cost net reference numbers on the diagram for each one. You're going to be doing some design in here, by the way. Uh, so it's going to come up and say, we're going to use this sensor, and then you're going to have to figure out how to come up with a circuit to make it do what it says it wants to do. So you'll be able to design some very simple motor control circuit uh, in this class. So what you're going to do is, uh, on the diagrams, you're going to make sure you, you write your watch and manufacture numbers. Now this is a little different, uh, and I'll have to give y'all that out. Uh, what they do, what they're doing here in the motor control, what they did is they put a little di a little wiring diagram up on the on the panel that shows you how to wire it. Uh, what they do on the new ones is you got a bunch of numbers. And you don't it would that would be actual manufacturer numbers. So what you would have to do is we have we they would have have to look up the information or find the information the data sheets on there. Well, we've run that off for you. It's just instead of you seeing it up on your panel, I ran off where you can look up the number and how to wire all these different things. And that's what these things are all here. So when you look at your uh, your trainers and everything, you're just going to have a bunch of numbers, and which is what you would have in in real life, right? So you're not going to go out and buy buy a, a limit switch, and it'll have it might uh, some of them do have little pictures on it that shows you how to wire it up. Most of the time, you get a little pamphlet comes through that tells you the manufacturer numbers on there and tells you how to work. Students in the team must take, must take turns connecting circuits. Right? You understand that, right? So when you look at the, the lab form, you have the builder of the circuit and then, of course, uh, the assistant, right? Everybody understand that? So one of you, but you're not, and I've had this happen where I've come in and a student's been sitting out here in the center and the other guy's up there wiring the circuit. He said, well, it's not my turn. You're a team, right? You understand. So what's the other member supposed to be doing? Well, I'm also telling you, telling you how to wire it. So you're up there instead of you're looking at the diagram, this guy, this guy's saying, okay, you need to hook this wire up to number three on this terminal right there, right? You don't understand that. So this is a, this is a team effort. And what that, that means, if you're sitting on your butt over here and I go over and it's wired wrong, I take points off both your lap. Well, I wouldn't be up there. But you're, you're a team and that's what you're trying to, one of the things that, that almost every employer, every, every employer that's ever contacted me, that's one of the things they want to work. How long, how well do you work with others? So we had one of our students, uh, in PLC. And y'all, you help each other, right? And you learn, you learn a lot, uh, especially if you swap, if you, if you swap roles. Uh, then you, both of you have an advantage of, of learning how to read the diagram and, and, and wire, wire things up. <coughs> uh, and I had one of my students came in on a PLC class uh, one time and said the instructor didn't care who, who did the circuit. 
I taught I taught uh, advanced PLCs one time, and I had three students that had never entered a diagram in the PLC that had intro to PLC because the instructor didn't make them do what swap. So and you and you're always going to have almost always have one person that's going to dominate. So what happened is he, they got with somebody and they set off to the side and got credit and got credit for the lab. And they, so they pass the intro and they move in class and within the first week three people dropped out of class. So well, we need to require that. That's uh, I've been talking to the other people that teaches PLCs and because it happened again this last time too. Make sure they understand the folks that swap positions and watch them too. But make make turns, right? And you're going to provide the the the, the Structure of the circuit. Now, if your team member's not here, you're not, you're going to do what? You're going to have to serve both roles. And your team member will not get credit for the lab. So, uh, but Say that again. if you're not here, your team member, if your team member's not here, you, you do your lab and they don't get credit for it. Oh, okay. Well, now what we do at the end of the term is, is we, and if they come back in and you're not through with the lab, they don't get credit for the portion of the lab that you did, right? You understand that? Yeah. And what we do at the end, we scale, we scale the lab. I think here we're not doing many labs, so we only scale it by one lab. So that gives you the ability to maybe be absent once, right? And if you're going to be absent a lot in an eight-week term, then you're not going to pass the class. And probably of the people that failed my class, I would bet over 99% was because one. They didn't come. They didn't come. Because these classes, there's so many ways. If you're real good in lab and not good in theory, you can pass. If you're real good in theory and not as good in lab, you can pass, right? The way it, we, we scaled it, it took us a long time to get there. If you're in good, but you don't make an A. So to make an A, you got to be what? Get in both of them. Which is the way it should be. Uh, place a check mark beside each experiment procedure. So I'm coming back there and I'm signing off. You said, I need a sign off, and I go back and I have no idea why I need to sign. You gotta sign here, you gotta sign here, but I don't need to do that, right? So I should be able to do right off the bat. So to you, it's not much, but the rest of your team members, you know, uh, I walked into a store one time, and I was standing there with my money trying to pay this, this lady, and she got on the phone and was trying to do business over the phone with somebody that might not even come in. <laughs> So what did I do? I turned around and walked off. They didn't get my business. I don't know if they got the other business, but they sure didn't get mine. So, you know, people get upset about that, and I do too. You know, you're, you got, you got, you know, they say a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, but you get on these businesses, they're trying to get the one out of the bush, right? You understand? They that? don't care. They don't own the company. Well, they don't. <laughs> like all the problems. So Starbucks and all that. <laughs> And people don't, you've heard that before, haven't you? I heard it. Well, that's what they mean, you know. Well, I'm sitting there trying to buy something, and you're trying to get the bird in the bush, right? You understand? To come in, and uh, they, might or might not. they may or may not. not you, know. you, you finally realize that what that meant, Melvin? <laughs> Melvin, you finally realize what that means? <laughs> so, he, if you don't, if you don't get anything out of my class, like you're, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> all circuits must be checked for short circuits with a student provided on meter before energizing. If a fuse is blown, it's 20 points out. Um, we got plenty of fuses, but there's no when you connect a circuit, that is no excuse for blowing a fuse. Right? You understand that? Because you're going to check it with one. You're going to check it with an ohm meter. But you got them, if you got any active devices that you need, like push buttons and limit switches, you need to activate those, right? Because you can have the short on the other side. And uh, you're going to have to disconnect one wire from your transformer because your transformer's only got two or three ohms worth of resistance. It's got a lot of reactance, right? You understand that. That's what, because your transformer gets all this opposition from reactance. So it almost has no watt. Resistance. Why? Because you want to get a lot of current out of those things. So, so disconnect one of your wires. Because if you don't disconnect it, it's going to look like you got a short. You measure across L1 and L2. 
the instructor must perform a basic safety check. All I do, guys, is I'll come over here just like on motor controls, and I'll check the L2 side. If the L2 side is wired right, there's no way in the world you can have short circuit. Right? You understand that? So that's all I do. And then I'll, I'll, I'll apply it to power. If it's not, then we'll take off some points and see what's on. Trainer modules that are not part of the current uh, connected circuit must be stored on the uh, correct shelf. Mr. The, most, of other, uh, most of the other instructors don't follow this. Uh, I get over there and uh, try to see a circuit, and you got all these modules all over the place. You got modules on the table, uh, 208 volts up there, and you got all this garbage on top of your table. You know, and we don't require steel toed shoes, and you're moving things around, you knock one of those things off. If you knock it off on my left my left foot, I wouldn't be able to feel it. If you knock it off on my right foot, I'd be too. But, so we want to make sure those modules are all where under the table. We don't have that many. While we've got, uh, some of them are full blown, uh, sets, and we'll, we'll just take those off and put them, store them on these uh, cabinets. But the number of modules that we're going to use is going to be pretty limited. I know we're going to use some control relays, and we're going to use motor starters. Of course, we've got to have the transformer up there, and then we're going to have sensor modules. Uh, the sensor modules right now are back on that back shelf, but as we, as we do them, we'll leave them. Well, since we're going to use these for sensors anyway, we'll leave those uh, under the tables too. Okay. And then that, so all we'll have is not very much to, to require, required to have for the, for the sensors anyway. Students will not be awarded points for portions of experiments completed by team members when they are absent or tardy, when they absent or tardy member returns. And this happens every time I teach this class. I'll be over there and a guy will be sitting out here and, I'll, and the other guy will be up there. I said, what you doing? Well, this other guy is making up the work. He was absent. Said, That's not the way this class works, right? You understand that? So the person that was absent, you don't reward them. for. You don't penalize yourself because the person was absent. Because you're over there not doing anything, or you you may even be up there with them, and you're letting them make up their work, and you've got 15 laps to do. Right? You understand? So you end up making a C when you should have made an A because you wait you waited for them to do what? Try to let them make up the work, and they should have made the C because they were absent. Everybody understand that? It's just like your employer. Your employer don't pay you if you are if you don't show up. Except for them. We get uh, we get one sick day a month, and if you don't take them, they just do what? They just roll over. No, you just keep doing one sick day, and we get five personal days a year. And if you don't take those, they roll into your sick leave. So we get seventeen days a year that we can take off and still get paid. When I had my motorcycle accident, I was off for a year and a half and didn't miss a check. Because I have a... Who in the world filled in that long? Uh, Tegrity. Tegrity. No, uh, what Nancy did is uh, I record all my lectures <coughs> and she would bring the student into the classes and find the lectures of what I taught. And she would play my lectures, and then she would take them to life. So I taught when I wasn't even here. So, so that's that's one. It, well, we have some instructors that's petrified that uh, they're going to use those lectures against them. They're going. Th this is true. They're they're going to use the lectures and fire them once they're made. But uh, they never have done that or even talked about doing that. But it allowed me to teach the class. Even though, and I got paid for it too, by the way, because I was, but it was sick leave. And then Nancy, that's what she did. She called him in to the classroom, let me lecture, and then do what? <laughs> then she took him off. <laughs> so I've got over 2,000 hours of sick leave right now. So I now at the end, we can count it toward our retirement. So that would count as years of service. <laughs> and how many? How much we make is by years of service. Lab grades that are not lab grades are not to leave the classroom. All that forms must be terminated as instructor. So we got two boxes, right? They're over here. One of them's labeled what? To be graded and not to be graded. This happens every time too. 
Well, Rich, I've thrown that loud in there. I, I know I did. Guess where it's at? It's in the not to be graded box. So, uh, I don't touch them when they're there, guys. But what it does is it allows you to leave your laps here and not leave. Because uh, every year, every year we go over our copy budgets and they jump on us all the time. So I try not to make a lot of copies of everything. Uh, each team must uh, complete their own lab form. Everybody okay there? Each team. So uh, what we have to understand, uh, these are just like, uh, this is just like the motor control class. Where what? I guess Jackson decided he didn't do it. He didn't tell me. So we we'll all have to post on there. So the question at the end of each experiment chapter and chapter quizzes are not a lot. They're not a team effort. Which means those, so both of y'all are getting credit for the lab, and you're getting credit for your answers to the questions. Everybody understand that? So y'all don't copy each other's questions. This happens all the time. I don't think I've ever taught a class where somebody didn't copy somebody. I mean, even misspelling words. I, I taught one class in, uh, in the, uh, I think it was digital, and one of the one of the characters. Uh, a guy wrote a six like this. The next guy wrote that six like this. It's a G, an uppercase G. There was four more people that wrote it down as a G, an uppercase G. <laughs> when it was a number, well, and it was hex, it was happen. it was a hexadecimal number, and they're the biggest number you have, the biggest letter you have in hexadecimal is an L, which is what they got. Water yeah. Once you complete, I say questions at the end of the experiment and chapter quizzes must be answered at home while you're waiting or while you're waiting an instructor sign off. Uh, this class we shouldn't be uh, since the class is so small. I think we'll only end up with uh, four, three or four groups. Uh, it should be pretty fast. You know, my time is not going to be spent up a lot. Normally, what we do in motor controls is that there's such a big class. You don't need to be standing up there waiting on me when I'm working with somebody else. So that's when you can come back in class and answer those questions, right? You understand? Uh, if not, you're supposed to answer the chapter quizzes and do those questions at home. What we're going to try to do here is wire circuit, right? You understand? Not book work. We're not doing book work here. We're doing lab. Everybody okay on that? Uh, completed labs we're going to turn into do be graded. Here's the lab form. It's just like normally we do. Another big problem I have is people want to write their time down here, and I'm not asking for the time. I'm asking for the amount of time. Uh, everybody understand that? Everybody okay there? So every day you work on it, you're going to put the date and the amount of time that you worked off rounded to the nearest what? I don't think it says a hour. I think it says like 30 minutes. To the nearest half hour, yeah. Uh, then the build, circuit builder names, the figure number, and then I initial it. Everybody okay there? And then you don't write down in here, this is where I take off points. Uh, for safety, for following instructions, for paperwork, for assistance. Uh, this class right here, we shouldn't need any assistance. Why? You've already had motor control. So in motor controls, I usually give the first four, four weeks for assistance. Well, what we do, and then after that, I start grading one. Because everything we do, we're going to go over in class. The time to ask the questions is not when you're wiring the circuit. The time to ask the questions is when we're going over the circuits in class, right? So every circuit will go over in class. Everybody understand that? If you got any questions there, answer it answer then. Let me understand it. All the circuits that we're going to build, you're actually going to go over how they work, what we expect to do. That's kind of true. Well, the design, I can't go over the circuit that you're supposed to design, right? You understand? Now here, those type of things, assistance is not bad. Because what you're going to do is you're going to come up there and you're going to say, Rich, is the circuit okay? And I'll look it over and I'll make suggestions. That's, that's not assistance. Assistance would be, you want me to help you wire a circuit. Well, I'll help you wire the circuit. But I'm going to take off points. It's not much, guys. I think it's like five points on a, 
I have I have guys that'll stay up there two days trying to wire something up, and they won't they won't ask for help to lose five points. And what did they end up losing? A whole mile, right? You understand? You understand? No. Well, no. I I give this lecture every I give this lecture every time. So the the asking for help now on design circuits. We don't count off for that because y'all have never done what yet? You've never actually designed. What you've done is you've taken circuits that other people have designed and you've wired them up. So circuit designs are okay. So you come up here and you say, Rich, first of all, I'm going to check all of them before you even wire them up, right? You understand? You'll bring them up here. You say, is this okay? And I'll say, okay, if it's okay, you can go ahead and you know, wire it up. Or I'm going to say, no, this will never work. Can't you see this? And I'll explain the problems with the circuit for you. And then let you go back and correct it. And you're doing you're doing the design effort as a team, right? You understand. Uh, so that means when you're doing your design, I don't I don't want to see one of your team member up here and the other team member up here. And then letting one and this happens all the time too, where you, they let one person try to do all the design for the team, and then they want to get what well, they want to get credit for it. So y'all working as what as a team? Make suggestions. Uh, you can you can hook them. You can. As long as you're together, both of y'all can come up with your circuit and then do what? Then compare them and see see if, see which ones has the best features and that kind of stuff. That's fine too. I'm not saying both of you can't come up with a design. Huh? Yeah, everything we do in here is ladder logic. This is ladder logic. All our sensors and everything is ladder logic. I know we're running out of time, guys. And here's the deduct here's the deduction circuit. Right and these are the labs we're going to do. Right now, uh, we've been on this one. Uh, by the way, I gave y'all an opportunity. I think all y'all finished, uh, but I gave y'all an opportunity to make that up. And, you know, we had one person show up for it. it was Gary, uh, Gary, so that's it for that. For, for the people that sat in May. Uh, so we've got three labs inside proximity sensors. We've got three labs in level control, temperature control, pressure control. And then we'll go over to this and, and identify the lab and sensors on the manufacturer. Make sure. So this is the lab. So we got one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve, twelve, thirteen labs. Any questions on that? Thirteen hundred points. Thirteen hundred points. That's right. That's a break you to break you on. I think in the motor controls, it's pretty it's pretty close to motor controls. I think in motor controls we have fourteen lamps. I think. Yeah. It's enough to keep you busy, I know that. <laughs> now let me show you all these symbols and then we'll, uh, in fact I might run them off uh, for you. And the, uh, these are ISO symbols. These are international symbols. Unfortunately here at the United States we love to do the things our way, right? I don't know, some of y'all might have been old enough to remember when they tried to adopt us over to kilometers. Y'all remember that? Huh? And the interstate became very crowded because they had these, these popsicle sticks they had for miles and they also had it on kilometers. All your signs had it listed in what? Miles and kilometers. Your your speedometers on your car had two had miles and kilometers on it for a while, and then eventually what they was going to do was move away from miles and take all the miles down. But what happened? Somebody come to their senses. <laughs> no, if you understood kilometers, it, it you'd say feet and yards just makes absolutely no sense at all. If you do 90 kilometers an hour on the freeway, you won't get a ticket. No, you won't. We'd be over overseas when we was over in Japan, and you'd be sitting over there, and you'd look over there at the speedometer. We'd do a 90, and you'd say, God! And then you realized it was a... You're about 60. Yeah. <laughs> so when we was over in some countries, I'd always... We'd go in. We'd go as a group, and normally some people would sit in the front, but I'd sit in the back. <laughs> so when we, when we got in a crash, I'd be able to grab on to something. They didn't have seat belts. They didn't have seat belts. Oh, they didn't have seat belts. 
we uh, we were over in Iran. I went to Iran, by the way, before the Shah was in power. And uh, those guys were crazy. Gosh, dog it. They scared me. So we'll look at the uh, some of the sensors on the electrical and uh, just real quick. And then uh, we'll cut out. Jackson, I'm gonna have to. This is the second time he split out on me, and I'm gonna have to. I don't know how he plans to. Now, if he's got a valid excuse, like another class, then maybe that'll be okay. But so the symbols for motors, the symbols for sensors in motor controls is pretty straightforward. It's just gonna be a lot. A, a, a diamond, yeah. a triangle will be like that. So it's going to be a diamond shape, and then <clears throat> pneumatic. We're looking for, I think, in out. No, I think that's the wrong one. I think this is actually this is not the diagram. Yeah, it is. So these are sensors. So first of all, on these, if you see the triangle, they would draw the triangle inside the cube. And they put two lines to it, and what that tells us is this is a, uh, they call it solid state, which is not true because technically a read switch is not a solid state sensor, but basically it, they, they'll say it's solid state, but it might not be tr in true in real life. Are we okay? And then, this indicates it's a normally open contact. This little low U shape means it's magnetic. So this is a magnetic sensor. So this is a inductive sensor. And it's a two wire sensor. So this is one of those guys that powers up through the system, right? You understand that? So this guy's going to drop around four volts, but it's still going to be okay, right? So these are all magnetic sensors. This guy right here, though, now notice this has what? two wires this guy here has what three and they're numbered one three four if you had a white wire it would be number one two um, that makes sense so what that means is that your your power is these is odd numbers and your what your outputs are even everybody okay there that makes sense. Uh, number one Oh. Okay, you got three wires. No, this is two wires. No, I'm talking about the three wires. Okay. This is the three wires. So this is a it's a magnetic sensor. It's got three wires. So these are hollow sensors. These two right here are reset. Well, we got. Okay, I thought there was blue bars. Oh, there's blue, brown, white, and black. No, not not on a schematic. Okay. Not on a schematic. Not on a schematic. Very seldom do they put colors on schematics. Oh, okay. When you wire them up, when you wire them up, they're going to be three color wires. You can see, right? You understand? Yeah, well, when we do these, when we do these line diagrams, these are not cars. Now, cars, if you got a schematic on a car, a good one, they're going to use colors. I guess what I'm asking you is, is well, one would be brown, right? Well, now, two wire, I, I, we'd have to look at two wire. see where the power is coming in. Right. And that would be the, that would be the brown wire. The brown wire for one. Yeah. The brown blue wire, one. the blue wire would be three. Right. Yeah. And, and four is the, And four would be the, signal. would be the signal wire, but it'll be black. So if you had a, if you had two outputs, if you had a single pole double throw output, then it would be number two. So your signal so, wires are even. It's right. important for me to kind of remember the correlation between that and what you're actually seeing. In now, your well, you okay now? I am. I guess they got. I guess they decided to do that on on the new on the on the directional control valves in, in fluid power. Uh, your inlet and your outlet port from your power source are always odd, and your working ports are always even. And so when they came out with this, that probably that's probably why they did that. They could have numbered these things anywhere, but it falls in the in a in a scheme where where people that, who understand fluid would understand this. Yeah, so your power, your power side, your, your on fluid on fluid valves, 
your power side, your exhaust and your uh, pressure on your magnets or your, or your pump and your tank on uh, hydraulic, those get, those get uh, odd numbers. The working ports, the ports that actually connect to the actuator, uh, those are always even. And it looks like they're doing the same thing right here. That's the first time I noticed that. But these are all magnetic sensors. Uh, these are all magnetic sensors. Uh, this is an optical sensor. Uh, can you see it? Uh, this is not actually standard. A lot of times they'll just put the LED in there. But this this means that both the transmitter and the receiver are in one unit. And then what it does, it communicates through fiber optic cables. Does that make sense? Uh, this right here is a pressure sensor. This is the magnetic sensor. This is the magnetic sensor. And these are outputs. So well, that was pretty easy. This guy didn't have any capacitive sensors in it. I'll show y'all some more. But so what they do is they in, on a, on the ISO symbol for symbols, they're inside of what a square, right? You understand? And then they put the diamond shape up there to indicate it's a proximity or solid state. And then they'll and then they'll you know, come out with numbers. If it were, if it shows you three three or four wires, it means it's electronic. It's got to be powered up, right? If it's two, it just means it, it either powers up through the circuit or it don't require power. So your 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 inductive and your passive sensors, they don't require power. They operate on such such little power. We can take that small voltage drop and produce enough power to operate those. Things. Your your photoelectric sensor. Those are those guys are going to be powerful. Those, those are going to be part of Are we okay? Any questions on the lab on the lab physique? And like I'll, I'll go into Festo. The Festo uses more sensors than the than the Amatro line does, and we'll be able to see more of those symbols. Motor controls. You just basically got to figure out what it is yourself, right? The photoelectric is pretty straightforward. Cause it's got the, it's got the photo, it's got the photo, it's got the lens on it. Uh, you'll be able to see the lens. Your, your, uh, your, uh, ultrasonics, your, uh, your capacitive and your inductive. They basically look, look the same. Are we okay? Alright guys, you have a good weekend. <coughs>